So, welcome, Martin, to Metalarium Pages. Hi. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Growl, this new upcoming album, and obviously more things related to the metal world. So, we're starting by asking, I think, uh, I think a common question. So, why the band delayed seven years to release new album? Because your first album, Transcendence, was released in 2016. In 2016. Now, seven years later, we have this new one. Mm -hmm. Yes, we changed our style. Um, that's because um, also our band members have changed. We needed to search for a new drummer and uh, a new guitarist. And um, yeah, that's why when we found other members, uh, new members of our band, like they are playing today, at least um, the guitarist is in this band today. And uh, yeah, we just wanted to create something new. We wanted to mix more death metal into our music, like evolve just from that, what we have from the fundament we laid. And um, yeah, it just was a very, very long process um, to get to the point where we were satisfied with the music, with our songwriting. And yeah, that's why it took so long. We needed new members and yeah, we wanted to, we didn't want to compromise our vision. Mm, okay. Okay. Well, uh, now the, the, now when the, the biggest difference uh, that exists already is that it, this Transcendence was released by Dominance of Darkness Records at that time. Now you are releasing this new album by Tragedy Productions. So how was the change of the labels for the first one to this new one? Yeah, it was great, actually, because um, Sergio from Tragedy Productions is very, very helpful. Um, he knows how, well, how to promote our stuff, and uh, he was offering us a good deal. Um, he was amazed by our music, and um, yeah, Dominance of Darkness, they, I think they changed leadership, and um, yeah, there wasn't as, as much... Uh, yeah, support from there. And we just wanted to try something else. Um, yeah, and we found Sergio. And yeah, it turned out we get along very good, very good. So yeah, we just stayed there. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. Well, you mentioned about the, the, the change of the style of the new of this new album, because when I hear the transcendence albums, it's more like a raw black metal in the beginning, but mm -hmm. now you have some more melodic approach to this new album. Like the like, I think like a trend that has happened with Gaeria, with Gaeria, with and um, Emegla, and a lot of these bands are are drink or drink, drink from the old ways of the black metal, but put a little mel melodic stuff now, and it's that's the new wave of the black metal is it in the in the world. So for this aspect. Well, that's my appreciation about the new album. So new elements, new melodic stuff. Well, obviously a, a lot of darkness into the new album, but perhaps you have a different approach, uh, a, a different approach to this. Uh, what kind of difference exists already from the for you, especially from your point of view, since Transcendence to now? Um, yeah, I or we well, straight away from this classical black metal stuff we where well, we um, recorded for Transcendence. Um, and also like our listening, um, like in private, what we're listening, um, we just straight away from that. We didn't want to make it raw. We um, listen to more melodic music now. And that's just like, it was, I think it's very. It was very organic. Um, I think we started raw, but uh, wanted to go this other route, like in this modern stuff. We don't like the, the old school black metal stuff. It's like worn out, we think, and um, we want to push the borders of of genres. Yeah, that's like that's why we have doom elements in there, death elements, and um, wanted to try more with our vocals, like we have experiments um, with multiple singers, vocalists, and um, yeah, I think it just came naturally, actually. We, we didn't, didn't think about like making it in another way, in another style, but um, yeah, that's, that's just what uh, came with time. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, talking about interesting to see. Well, one thing that I saw was about obviously Grau comes from Germany, a great a great country for the metal scene. You have back end, you have a lot of labels into the into the into German. It's a it's a huge force into these aspects. So for this aspect, uh, well, I remember. Well, I'm from the I'm I'm from the eighties. I remember when when appears with Creator Halloween, the huge movement into the hey power metal and heavy metal. Uh, power metal and heavy metal was was great uh, at that at that time. So, but now uh, I saw that the, the the recent years, ten or twenty years ago, the black metal and the dead metal has a huge impact with new bands, with new with the music, new albums. But I remember with the, at the as I mentioned in the eighties and nineties, well, especially the nineties, uh, the black metal and dead metal didn't have uh, a sound came from German. You you guys you know, just listen. Uh, well, it's, it's normal. Yeah. But heavy trash has a sound, but dead and black didn't have a sound. Now Germany has to try to put boundaries, put a a, lo, a little. Uh, I I saw avant garde, a little per experimental, a little progressive into the music. So that's my point of view since since the eighties to now. But your point of view as a new mus as a new musician into this new generation from since two thousand fourteen as a girl band. So what kind of what how how do you see now? How is the now the Germany scene compared to the eighties, nineties, and now? Actually, I think the German scene isn't that interesting for me. Um, I don't listen to much uh, black metal bands from Germany. Um, maybe to name one is the uh, Weg einer Freiheit. They are um, a very also very melodic approach to um, black metal and also pushing boundaries uh, of genres, and that's. That's what I like. And um, actually, I don't know that many bands from Germany that like influenced us or uh, I could define, I, I think it's hard to define um, a German black metal sound, actually. Um, when I think about German black metal bands, like newer ones, I need to search for it, actually, because there isn't anything from the top of my head um yeah i think in general like maybe european black metal became um or gathered or uh, developed a new style like i see bands like garia you mentioned them um or we from um from belgium and uh other like Hmm. other bands like did that who like to experiment like what i see is having different genres incorporating black metal into their music like this uh, different genres like death metal um are discovering black metal elements and putting them in there and i really enjoyed this style of music and i think it's in the development we can see right now um, at least from europe mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, uh, then man, changes from the for me from these new albums, as I mentioned, it is obviously the melodic into the music is the more melodic stuff. What well, a new, like like a black modern black metal, if if we can put an, a a label, the modern yes, black metal, so. with this aspect. Uh, but um, other aspect for me, uh, then the cover art for me is more visceral. If we compare the previous one, the previous one just a black cover art. <laughs> Like a like a like a grappling in the stone. I remember <laughs> some of these kind of yes. stuff. It's not like now. It's mm -hmm. more detail. Uh, it's more detail, more aspects. So and obviously the name is in German. So at sides the slickst and obviously all sounds. Uh, all sounds. Uh, well, no, all sounds are are obviously in German. Niemen, Allman, Nix, Fieber, Fieber, Fieber Traum. So it's it's really mm -hmm. amazing. It's it's really amazing that Germany always puts there now. A lot of bands are trying to communicate with their language, especially. So, but for you, what is the reason that the band, um, that the band created the, the the songs or the lyrics with German with German language? Because I know I uh, I speak German, so I know about what you mentioned in the lyrics. Mm, okay, that's interesting. Um... Yeah, actually, there is an exception. Um, the second song, Nieme, is Polish. It's mm -hmm. not in German, um, at least in parts. 
And um, the explanation to that is just, uh, it's fed naturally. Like everything we do must feel natural. And um, Grau is a project, yeah, made from our hearts, like for real. Um, and and uh, that just felt like the right approach. Um, we like the German language and um, we obviously in Germany, we just, only speak German. So um, that's why we think our feelings and thoughts are the best transported in German for us. And um, I just hope that even our uh, international listeners um, will appreciate that, that they will like what they hear. Um, sure, there will be extra steps to translate uh, the lyrics um, if they really want to know what's what's behind that. Um, yeah, but it's also very, yeah, like I said, a natural approach to that. And, um, I'm part Polish, uh, that's why the second song, Nieme, which is, um, mute, mute in, in English, um, it's a very personal song about my life and a very hard situation I had. And, um, I wanted to make sure just I could sing about this and um that was why i decided to, to put their um polish lyrics out there just well to loosen it up a bit and uh confuse people <laughs> <laughs> and yeah just um make it more personal it's a very very personal album for all of us ah uh, yeah okay okay pass till do deal this huh? okay so other well, other aspect, as you can see, a lot of bands are now releasing a lot of music, a lot of albums, EPs, singles, videos. But now the social media uh, grow very fast from this aspect, very very fast, especially for the new bands. Well, like you, second album, might have, and now we have more record labels to ask promotionals, more record labels to ask interviews, band new bands, etc., etc. For you, what are the biggest difference that grow? The has from in this upsets the slicks compared to the compared to the a lot of stuff coming each day. I think each day each day we have thirty or forty release per day. Even if even we if we take the bank and Friday, we uh, I, I always receive in my email bank and Friday like hundred releases for just per per in Fridays. So what is how what is for you what is the uh, the main the main or the the main the main thing that this album has compared to the, a lot of things happen now? You mean um I don't know if I understand the question right. Like you're the, asking what set us apart like from others? Yes, or? yes, yes. That one. The special thing mm -hmm. that this album has compared for the well, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Our special thing, I think, is that we mix and match everything we just liked at this at the time of um, of our uh, songwriting. We didn't want to like just do black metal, and um, we wanted to push it with our vocal experiments. Like we have two singers, three singers on some um, tracks. And uh, that's something I don't hear a lot. Like there are bands for sure, like maybe Panzerfaust or something um, like that, which are using um, like this ping pong game of uh, of vocals, like one is uh, screaming and one is growling. And yeah, that's something we needed to emphasize because um, yeah, I was, uh, I was, training vocals and um yeah that's when when time went on i uh, developed a good understanding for my vocals and uh, yeah that's something we just wanted to incorporate there also our approach um of not be uh, having like typical song structures um we, we don't have like choruses and um verses like they are usually are used like in pop songs or in <laughs> actually uh, many death metal songs. Um, that's something like 
Weg einer Freiheit hier in Germany is also doing and um, we want to let the songs flow, just having, having not to confuse people, but um, having a flow which doesn't always, um, well, have these strict patterns of verses and choruses. And I think it's a journey, so maybe that sets us apart. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So, other than now, as talking about the promotion from this new album, what kind of plans do you have to promote this new this this new album? Perhaps you will embark tours in Europe as a new band. Perhaps you will prepare videos for this new album, or perhaps you already are composing or are are are, are already prepare everything to release one well, to re-record no re-record a new album. Who knows? What kind of plans do you have for Grow in the future? I have some plans. Um, Sergio's uh, Tragedy Productions is actually very helpful in this regard um, because we are very firm. We don't, um, we aren't experts in promotion. So um, we took help from Sergio and he is working with a PR agency from Italy. And um, yeah, he arranged, um, or oh, we planned the, um, and release plan. So um, we made a lyrics video, which will be released, I think, by the time this interview will be online, like next week on Friday, uh, this week on Friday, actually. Um, mm -hmm. We're releasing a lyrics video via um, a big German metal site, uh, website. And um, yeah, our first single is already out and um, we will continue to post more and more um, posts on Instagram, Facebook, um, and YouTube. So, so uh, we will release three singles. Like the first is out now, Erinnerung, you can listen to it now. Um, the second one will be Ohnmacht. Ohnmacht is um, the one with the lyrics video. We put very much effort and <laughs> actually money into, into that and um, wanted to create a, a nice atmosphere. So um, that's the second one. And the third one, Fras, like it's the longest one from the album and the most epic. And um, that's the last single before releasing in December our album. And yeah, that all, all of that will be accompanied by um, posts on various metal websites, press kits, reviews, and um, some other stuff uh, we have in, yeah, in plans. Um, so, um, yeah, and on the other side, um, I'm planning to push Grau also with my other band. Um, I'm, I am having a second band called Grech. It's uh, also a German band, um, but it's more doom black metal. Um, I'm a vocalist there and uh, it's actually getting traction a lot now. It, um, it's really going great there and I hope to push it my grau with Grech also so um yeah we we we'll see I'm very very um excited to see what happens um I don't want to see the album upsides des lichts um disappear like transcendence maybe we did mm, okay uh when talking about uh, as I mentioned talking about other kind of aspects into but like uh uh, 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 I even well, I have a curious things about talking about the name of the of the band Grau, because Grau mm -hmm. here uh, here in Latin America is is a last name for a hero from Peru, Grau, Grau. That's okay. a, that's a curious thing. But obviously, I will I will try to I try to find some meanings of the obviously in German about the the name. But Grau is like something. It's grease, no? It's like the it's what is, how do you say in English? It's gray in is is gray in right, English. Yeah. So, but why do you decide to put growl, growl or gray in? Uh, what is the meaning? Perhaps is it, is something to do with it has some, some something to do with the life, the personal things about the name, no? Growl. <laughs> yeah, we actually looked very long into this um we weren't satisfied by many names we we thought about so many things back then it was well 
like seven years <laughs> ago. I uh, can't even recall that good. But uh, I remember um, that we wanted a very simple name um, because to that, on, to that time, um, m many emerging black metal bands had the simple names, the simple logos we like to see, like also readable with, um, yeah, actual letters you can, yeah read on the on the first site and um yeah like we said uh, we we are brainstorming a lot but there isn't any particular meaning behind it like actually because um we stumbled upon this name and thought okay that's a fitting name for a band like playing black metal but maybe pushing the boundaries of the genre and um yeah, we, we looked into it and we found out that it seems like there is no other band called Grau, um, at least mm -hmm. in the metal genre. So um, we took it. We took it. It was it was uh, short. We could make a good logo out of it. So um, that's very pragmatic, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, nice, nice, nice to hear. And as I mentioned it, uh, talking about other kind of other kind of aspects into the metal in general, and obviously we are, we are very close to the to end of this interview, Martin. For this aspect, mm -hmm. as you can see now, a lot of people are using the music as a background of their lives. You can see these aspects in the social media, putting these histories in Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, etc. Just putting the music, Black Death, or or whatever whatever they want as a background of their lives. They're doing going to the gym, going to the going to the gym, going to the bath, or or exit, or driving a car. It's just, the music now is not it's not taken seriously as I take in in the eighties or nineties when you hear the CD four, three, five. If you like the CD, you hear the album more than more than a hundred times to now. So it's that, but now it's very different. Now the people are more focused in short things, especially the singles. And now, obviously, fifteen or thirty seconds into the background. So for you, what is your opinion about now? The music is more, it's more taken like in, it's like, uh, like um, oh, like a background in their common, in the common lives, going to the job, going to the etc. etc. This kind of thing. What's your opinion about this aspect? My opinion, um. It has good and bad sides. Um, I think when I remember, when I was a student um, in college, I remembered long train rides and discovering albums um, while sitting on the train. Like maybe that's not particular uh, a background music as you described it like going to the gym you're doing activities and then there's that music in the background so you maybe could pump up or something um but like i discovered recently that um i stopped listening music like albums on purpose like taking my time just to sit down and listen to music and I re rediscovered it for like half a year ago and just to put my smartphone aside, um, put on music and, and just tried to listen to an album without any distraction. And I think it's so much better. It's um, so much richer than just having it in the background it's like i don't have anything against it that people just listening is in the background but when you discover the lyrics when you discover like all the nuances in the songs which well all the artists i think um are putting effort into um they go well they, they are lost in this listening in this style of listening but if it makes them happy, like why don't why shouldn't they listen it in the background? But I appreciate like listening, focusing on just the album. That's why we made an uh, an concept album in the first place. So um, you can just have a listen from start to to the end and have a journey. That's like a re reward. That um, well, you're taking your time and focus on this album. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, Martin, the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoy this one like me. Uh, I love this new album. Great one. Uh, great one to the black metal area. Air, area. Oh, area. Yes, area. Yeah. Okay. Area, so, uh, perhaps, <laughs> uh, perhaps we want to add something to your Latin American fans. Or we, or to your new Latin American fans because grow is something like new or yet yet for for years. So, and with a little followers. Yes. Um, have a good time listening to our album. Um, even though it's foreign and far away, I hope um, to listen to more uh, good stuff from Latin America. Um, I hope tragedy, I listen to all the stuff Tragedy Productions is putting out and I love it. Um, so I hope that the scene is um, being populated there. And um, yeah, that's what I can say to the 